What's up, Eagles Nation? What's going on, NFL world? How you doing, division rivals? This is Steven Heider with Gate City Sports Channel. The sports channel where the cerebral NFL fan comes for about 10 minutes of daily content. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, whenever it is you get around to watching this channel again. Once again, my name is Steven Heider with Gate City Sports Channel. All right, guys, if you are new to the channel and this is the first video, maybe the first couple videos you watch, listen, I would love to add you to the community. In order to do that, I'm going to need you to hit that subscribe button, guys. It means a lot. I greatly appreciate every one of you who do that. And then number two, all right, guys, if you're an OG supporter, you already know what I'm going to ask you to do. Hit that thumbs up button, guys. That thumbs up button is what communicates with YouTube and helps us take this content and push it out across the platform. All right, y'all, today's topic. Guys, today's topic is really going to be about the linebacker position. All of us were getting a little concerned, right? We were all kind of screaming and yelling a little bit of, hey, Howie, uh, man, love the move so far, but uh, what's going on at linebacker? I, I would be lying to you if I told you that I thought Jatavius Brown was going to be the signing the Eagles made. I mean, now looking at the player and, and kind of analyzing and making best guest estimates of what I think Howie Roseman, you know, saw in this player, I see it. It makes sense. He's a fast flow you know, kind of in-betweener type of linebacker. He's 5'11", 225-ish to 230-ish. Like, okay, he, he's got a little experience playing inside. He probably could play the will for the Eagles. Um, look, it, it's an interesting signing, but I think there are some issues with him when you go and, and you consult the film. And today, guys, what I'm going to do is I am going to consult the film, and I'm going to show you what stood out, like what stood out to me on film about this young man. All right? So... Without further ado, guys, we're going to take a look at the film today. We're going to talk a little bit about this kid, Jatavius Brown, and we're going to talk about the linebacker position as a whole. So, uh, listen, stay tuned, y'all, and uh, let's get to today's topic, guys. All right, y'all, let's get to it. That these guys are all familiar with, with Bruce Arians. Quick pass to Kirk. And he okay, guys, the first thing that kind of draws my attention about Jatavius Brown is, look, his physical stature is going to stand out to you guys. I mean, he's five foot eleven, two hundred and twenty-one pounds according to Pro Football Reference. I've heard him listed anywhere between two twenty, two twenty-five, and two thirty. In this particular game that I'm going to show you footage of, which was from the twenty eighteen season, it was a um, Chargers and Arizona Cardinals game. They referred to him as being a two hundred and thirty pound linebacker. Who knows? I mean, somewhere between two twenty and two thirty, guys. Now, as you go through and you look at this young man, he's still pretty young. I think he's twenty six years old. Looks like to me. Um, still a fairly young man. He's got, he's got plenty of time. Let's see. He was born in February. So yeah, 94. So he was just really, just really turned that age. So he's, he's still a really young kid. If you go down and we take a look at his snap count guys. So if you go down through like, you know, we'll come back to the van stuff, but let's look at his snap count. His rookie year with the uh, San Diego chargers at the time, he played in 12 games, you know, uh, started in seven games. So Got about 42, looks like, reps on special teams. That's not really a, a really definitive snap count. It's not really giving us the actual snaps he played. But, oh, no, so I see it. Number 600. So 600 snaps he played, which is, uh, you know, pretty good amount of, of snaps here. Uh, 2017, played uh, 16, all 16 games, started five of those games, was involved in 500 and five. Sorry, guys, about the ad popping up. I hate when these ads pop up, guys. Um the next season, which was 2018, played in 15 games, started in 10. So 2018, he looked like you know, maybe there was a future there. 637 snaps he was involved in, so roughly about 62%. And he played about 93 special team snaps. So one thing I will say is don't sleep on the fact that if you're going to play linebacker in Philadelphia, you better be able to play special teams. Now, he was available for 13 games this year. He started one game, but... Look at that snap count number. The defensive snaps he took, it's only 92. Like, that's a significant, you know, reduction in snaps, guys. I mean, no way of getting around that. He dipped off. And we, we can take a look and, and try to make some best guess estimates of why his production dripped off. But let's look at 2018's advanced defense and fumbles, guys. So if you come here to the advanced defense and fumbles, and we take a look at what's going on here in 2018, what we see here is if you come over, let's take a look at his tackles, right? He was in on 97 tackles, which looks pretty good. I mean, that's not bad. More than we had any other guys on our team, right? But he missed 16 of those 97. When you're in on 97 tackles, your missed tackle rate, in my opinion, you should be about 10, 11% at worst downward. Because 
you know, if you're not in on that many tackles, you know, you miss on one or two, that missed tackle percentage, of course, is going to be extreme. But when you're in on almost 100 tackles and you got a 14.2, you know, percent missed tackle rate, that tells us there probably is a slight concern about his ability to wrap up and tackle. So that scares me a little bit. You can see that number 76 is coming for you. You got a stack and shed. Um, he wasn't as good in pass coverage as I was expecting because when I run the film, and I'm going to show you some examples, guys. When I run the film, he looks decent in his drop back. Watch this zone drop by Jatavius Brown. He gets right in that window, that throwing. Every now and then I see where he doesn't quite get to his zone responsibility in the right hole the right way. Tough decision for him because you got this slant receiver running a two route and Fitzgerald running that six route. Okay? But for the most part, he looked okay in, the, in his movements. But you can look at 2018 and see that he gave up you know, 54 completions on 69 targets worked out to be about 78%. For linebacker, guys, I'm, you know, I'm not tripping over 78%. Uh, quarterback ratings were 99.9, so rated at 100%. I mean, this looks like a guy to me, and we're going to get into some more of this, guys, but he looks like a guy to me that Howie clearly brought in to kind of fit along with uh, Nathan Gary. I would envision that this linebacking core is going to look a particular way with this young man in the fold. Now, I'm not projecting any draft picks yet, because that'll be a video later, but just assuming we're going in with the roster the way it is, I'll give you projections of what I think this roster would look like, and then we'll break down some film. My, my original thoughts are this. If you look at who is available to play linebacker as it currently stands, right, uh, the most experienced guys are now Nathan Gary and Jatavius Brown. Behind that, we have a young, promising rookie, you know, free, an undrafted rookie free agent, right? And TJ Edwards is a good player. And then we had a special teams contributor, a guy who played a lot early in his career as well, to his credit, in Duke Riley. You have Alex, you know, Singleton, but I, I, I'm a little concerned he might be on the, the depth chart, depending on what we how we shake things up. But right now, I, I would be willing to guess we're not quite done with the linebacker room yet, but it's what we have currently. So as I'm looking at this room and you're asking me, well, what are we going to do? I do think there's a distinct possibility you will see the Eagles maybe play a little more base than what is normal. You're never going to see a return, I think, to, to the base unless teams get really run heavy again. But you might see the Eagles come out maybe 20, 25% in base now. And in base, I think the linebacking situation seems a little clearer to me. I would say that your Mike in base would be quite obvious. It would probably be your best run stuffer, which I still think is TJ Edwards. TJ Edwards is a very short tackler. I think that's who would play in a, you know, perfect world here. That's who would play your mic positioning in base. Then if you look to your Sam, so to the left of your, your mic, your Sam positioning, I would say then I would look to Nathan Gary to play the Sam. Good coverage linebacker. He's definitely whiffed on some tackles, but, you know, the coaching staff believes in this kid. I think Clint, uh, I think Flagel, Ken Flagel believes that he can keep developing this young man and, He's going to need to show up this year if he wants to be a long-term part of this Eagles, you know, organization. Then if you look to your will, I think this is where you can see Jatavis Brown really play a lot in will. Um, I think he's got the, the skill set to, to drop back into a zone and to cover. He's athletic. He can get sideline to sideline. Um, he can come up and he can play the run. He can stuff the run. He's, you know, even when the ball's not coming to him, he really does shoot and hit his gap hard. Watch the way he shoots this gap and he takes on that blocker. I don't want to make this kid out to seem like he's just undersized and soft. He is undersized, and bigger linemen do get up on this kid, and he struggles. But he's not soft. I mean, he'll come up and fill that hole as hard as he can. The problem being with him is, is when you look at things like the screen green, uh, the screen game, guys. When you see him in the screen game, I get a little concerned, to be quite honest. I don't always think that he you know, puts his best self and his best effort out there in the screen game. Sometimes I think he's a little late to read it. This is a tough one, guys. If he reads it a split second sooner, he probably makes the play. And you can't be late reading the screens. You know, that that's a big no-no. And that, that would be the areas I, I would struggle to, to kind of see here. But I do, I do think you'll also see, you know, Duke Riley factoring in here at the will. I think Duke Riley will get his chance. I do think that you could go into – you know, training camp with a, a battle between Duke Riley and Jatavis Brown to play that positioning. And then whoever the Eagles might pluck out of the draft. I mean, that's the other factor of this, guys. We just don't know who the Eagles may or may not pluck out of the draft. I, I would love to go get, you know, more solidified guys like a Troy Dye. I would love to go out there and get a, you know, a Malik Harrison, like, you know, guys that 
have a track rec record coming out of college that, you know, they're still young, they're still unproven, but we know they've played a lot, and we know they played at high levels. Past those guys, you know, if we're looking outside, like Will in that kind of positioning, I like Akeem, you know, um, Davis Gaither a lot. I think Akeem Davis Gaither is a really good football player. I don't know if I'm saying it right. It might be Akeem Gaither Davis. It's either Gaither Davis or Davis Gaither. I don't know. But he's a really good football player. He's the guy I told you guys that, man, when I run film, that guy reminds me a lot of Brian Dawkins in the way that he plays the football game. He's a freak that is very physical and flies through the air. He will come up and cover. I heard someone say he was a Jeremiah Trotter. No, he's not a Jeremiah Trotter, guys. This guy... And you can put him out there as a nickel and shut down a guy. Like, he's he's basically a safety playing the will. I mean, he's pretty good at it. He's pretty explosive. But, you know, we got some answers to the linebacker room. It's not done yet, in my opinion, guys. All right, y'all. Questions of the day. So, number one, let's just start with the obvious. Do you think that with this addition, this is it? Do, do you think the Eagles are going to add more? Okay. Are we going to make any more changes to the linebacker position, in your opinion? All right, y'all. Question number two. All right. So my second question is simple, guys. If we're going to make additions to, to the linebacker room, do you think that there's going to be another free agent sign, or do you think it's going to be primarily through the draft, or do you think we'll see another free agent and someone from the draft signed? I think that it's very likely we could see at least two more guys added, whether that's through free agency, whether it's through the draft, un, you know, restricted, you know, or yeah, un, you guys got undrafted rookie free agents, UDF, or, or you get what I'm saying here, guys. That would be an option. And then number three, if you guys think it's going to be through the draft or you think we're going to add free agents, give me your names. I gave you mine. Akeem Davis Gaither, I would look at. Um, I would also take a look at guys like, you know, Troy Dye. I would take a look at Malik Harrison. I think these value added guys at the back end of the draft, I mean, I really do think that there is a distinct possibility those guys could be added here. So. That's my opinion. I want to know your opinion. All right, y'all. You know what time it is. I'm about to close out this video. Guys, I hope you like some of the changes I've made. Um, I've been green screening for you guys. I got some exciting stuff coming up. All right, y'all. So let me know what you thought. All right. How do we close these videos? We go E-A-G-L-E-S. All right, y'all. Let's go, Eagles, guys.